Yo, welcome back to another episode of The Larry O Show. We have another jam-packed episode with a ton of FL Studio gems. Before we get into today's episode, I wanted to give a huge shout out to my very first sponsor of the podcast, Sennheiser. I've worked a lot with Sennheiser in the past and they're really good friends of mine and they have really high quality, top-notch stuff. Specifically, what I wanted to talk about today is, I've talked about these in the past, but these are HD 490 Pros. They're open back mixing headphones, but there's something very special about these headphones. They pair with a plug-in inside your DAW. They allow you to mix and reference your mixes in different environments. So now you don't really have to bounce your mix out, go test it in the car, go test it in the club, go test it in different environments and different style of headphones, different style monitors. You could do all of these references with the Sennheiser HD 490 Pros paired with this plugin. So if you want to check out more about the Sennheiser HD 490 Pros and so much more, click the link down in the description below. Again, thank you to Sennheiser for sponsoring this podcast. Podcast. Let's get into the episode. This week, like every other week, we're going to be doing another massive FL Studio course giveaway. I'm giving away every single one of my courses in my entire course catalog to five lucky winners in the comment section. Also, uh, stick around for the keyword for that to enter it in the comments. And also, we're going to be announcing last week's winners in this episode. So stick around for that. Uh, with that being said, we, you know, we can hop right into it. Um, I wish we had more FL Studio news. We we're kind of just talking about this a little while ago. It's been a little bit quiet. And one thing that I was kind of like concerned about, not concerned about, but like thinking about earlier today and a few days ago was where the hell is FL Studio 121.3? Uh, FL Studio 21.3. It's still in beta. So it still mm -hmm. technically says uh, 21.2.99 or something like that. That's what they call it when it's in beta. Yeah, 21.2.99. It's it's still and I double checked it. So I went to like FL Studios website and then go to the download. That's how I can normally check. I'll go to see what version they have. Like right when you're about to download the free trial, mm. it tells you what version it is. And even the free trial is always the most updated version. So that's how I can like double check and see if it's up, been updated. And it's not. And it's, it's not. been I feel like it's been months. I mean, I could be wrong, but I feel like it's been a, a while. So that means. Technically, the chord generation, all that stuff that we've been talking about for mm -hmm. a long time is still not technically out yet. So the chord generation is not out yet. Uh, Kepler, the new Kepler isn't out yet. All this stuff is not out yet because it's, I feel like it's, all right, so here, I think it's been since March, March 15th. Now, so, when they when they sort of like start teasing the beta and all yeah. that stuff, do they? They don't do, even really tease it, by the way. But, yeah, it's yeah. just like in the forums, isn't it? They it's drop put it in, in the there. forums, yeah. yeah, quietly. So yeah. how do how do people know what's going to be included in the beta before it comes out? They tell you. They they'll tell you like, like in so the, like in key the new features or whatever. in beta too. Mm. So like right here in the in the forum, it says it gives you a known issues. Uh, that gives you the installers for Windows and Mac, right? Yeah. Um, that come in separately, so they don't overwrite anything. Then it has. Like I said, known issues. And then it says key new features in beta two. It says piano roll, uh, note repeat for the piano roll, target editor area. Oh, yeah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Plugin support, plugins, menu bar, playlist, FL Studio mobile update inside there, piano roll scripting, and Mac and uh, Windows stuff going on for the GUI. I wonder if they're, they're like figuring out some like licensing stuff. Cause you know, said man. like some packs and stuff. Kepler will be new. XO. Kepler XO is is there. That spreader plugin was there. Remember how long how long yeah, ago we were like, talking about that? Like three clips ago. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. That's it. That it's still not fully in yet. Damn. That's wild to me. Yeah, that's and super that, wild. This is the longest I've ever seen something be in beta. Yeah, I mean, me personally, I guess you never know because it, it could just be them like ironing out little tweaks like yeah. the forums are super active. The people in the community are super active and adamant about you know, um, submitting like feedback. Yeah. So it might be just taking a little bit of extra time to iron out some of like the, the tweaks and I'm the mapping sure and it's, stuff. It's, it's super complicated on the back end of stuff. Yeah. And there's a lot of new stuff like we talked about. I mean, just to refresh pe people's memory, cause we haven't been talking about it because I feel like it's, it's, it's old features now, but it's not even technically out. That's yeah. the wild thing. Yeah. We got Kepler XO, we got spreader, we got the chord progression tool. We got other like key features that, but those are the three major ones. Mm -hmm. We have a bunch of macro stuff, tool buttons, MIDI out stuff, uh, the startup, choose addition to test in trial mode. I don't know what that is. Playlist, choose action when sample is dropped on instrument tracks in the playlist. Hmm. FL Studio, you got to hurry up with this. Hurry it up. 
I mean, we got. <laughs> We, I mean, we're spoiled though. That's why it's yeah, like yeah. I compare it to, um, like just nowadays, information goes so fast, and and it comes and goes so fast, just like songs do. So mm-hmm. like a song will drop, right? To put it in perspective of music, right? To keep it music related, um, a song will drop, and then you feel like that song has been played out and it's old, yeah, right. But it's really a month old. Mm-hmm. How, ma- how many times has that happened to you where you felt like, damn, this song has been played out. It's so old. This song is old as hell. Yeah. And then you look when the release date was and it was like three weeks ago. That's the kind of world we're living in now with everything. Or some songs will be like a year and a half old before they start getting traction too. just kind of like adding to what you're saying. But like, yeah. um, like certain, so certain like things go by the wayside. Out. Yeah. Say like a Drake. Well, everybody, everybody knows that everybody's talking about it. Yeah. That Drake song comes out. And it, you know, three weeks later, ah, that song's old. Well, the next day, the Kendrick song well, comes the next out. Day, <laughs> bro, the but, three Kendrick songs come out. I mean, if we want to like, talk about this beef stuff, I can't talk about it too much because I can't keep track of it, yo. I yeah. can't. I can't do it. I don't know why. Like, I feel like it's a part-time job to keep track of this beef right now. Right. I can't. I haven't listened to every single one of them. It's every other day they're dropping two each. I'm like... <laughs> What the hell's going on? Like, <laughs> this is the craziest beef I've yeah. ever seen in my it's, life. It's, it's pretty cool. I like yeah. it. Have I you like, listened to every single one? I so I haven't kept up to date, but like the one that dropped like Friday or whatever, I I was up to date on that one. And then I think Kendrick dropped something that was like, uh, uh, psh, 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 they ain't us or something like that. Mm-hmm. They ain't like us or mm-hmm. whatever. I heard that, and then I heard Drake's response, and then I think Drake put something else out to de- like today today i think i know so. he put one out last night yeah and right. then and just today's the sixth for every, anybody wondering we're recording yeah. this on the sixth episode comes out tomorrow at the latest wednesday so we'll see what happens right. but um yeah there i guess drake dropped one last night mm-hmm. might have dropped one today who know i mean at the rate right. we're going here he made, he could have dropped three between last night and today i wouldn't even know about it but kind of like pigtailing back to like yeah. what where this whole thing kind of comes from it's like the songs and like songs and media and content and and updates will come out and they're kind of like pigtailed to whatever else they're associated with so like in the like so with the disses it works that the songs are so quick back to back because the story is is bigger than the songs are yeah. the story is really like the you know everything around it like you know like legacy matches yeah. like classic like tag teams classic rivalries you might not remember every single bit of every single fight, but it's just the the pairing of the two against each other. Right. And I think like what's crazy to me, like I'm like is like how FL is kind of like fast streaming out like updates and stuff mm. compared to other softwares. Oh, there's no. no other software that updates as frequently as FL Studio. No. Ableton's not doing it. Logic's not doing it. Like the only thing that you can compare it to is like an apple product like an iphone i can i can mm-hmm. compare the update right exact thing to like an iphone like that's how popular mm-hmm. fl is compared right. to a lot of other doors i mean not maybe maybe it's just not that it's 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 as popular and there's that much of a demand which i think there is but this is this is the number one reason why fl studio is the best daw out there is because they're able to update as frequently as people in the community are tapping in and letting them True. know what yep. needs to be done no other software is doing it. No, nobody's doing that. Nobody. I mean, I feel like other DAWs, it'll be like once a year they'll drop an update. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then they got a, and then they got bug yeah. fixes throughout the next year. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm so saying? So I, I don't want to hear this. Whereas like FL has such a great system down. <laughs> yeah. We've talked about this too in the past where I mean, we're talking about it right now, the whole beta system that right. they have going on. That, that system and that community that they have going on in the background is such a well put together system in my eyes i don't know Mm -hmm. if you know from the beginning they thought of it like that or if that's just the way that they um kind of transitioned into going into the whole testing thing where they test a certain amount in-house and then they just they give it to the public kind of low-key give it to Mm -hmm. the public but now fl studio is so big it's like we're talking about beta in the in the fl studio news in the community as if it's the biggest thing in the world like it's a big drop which it is a big drop but like like I said, we've been talking about it for two months now, and it's not even technically dropped. And it's kind of like old news already. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's old news, and it's not even really out yet. Right, right, right. That'll be interesting to see. Like, I mean, how I wonder how much that will 
be relevant to them. It's like, how fresh is this on people's minds? Like this update, it'll, like, it'll refresh because it'll, FL Studio hasn't come out themselves and talked about any of this right. stuff. Only it's, we it's have just guys the like us. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. yeah, it's us. It's the community that's been buzzing. The about FL this, Hive. About, yeah, the FL Beehive. We've been, <laughs> we've been buzzing. <laughs> that's a hockey term that like uh, they use a lot that I want to like bring into like buzzing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, boy, you, you've been buzzing. You're buzzing. He's buzzing right now. Like talking about a goalie or like somebody who just scored a couple of goals. Yeah, yeah. Yo, T, the boys have been buzzing. The yeah. boys are buzzing right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, um, yeah. To go back to that is like, yeah, the, the community is buzzing to the point where we talk about these things. And FL Studio stays quiet on them until they're fully, fully released. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be to go back to that point. It'll be a big refresher to the to everybody once mm -hmm. FL Studio announces when they're fully released because <clears throat> they'll make their posts because these are huge updates. So but they, they made that. Make an update. Um, they made that TM eighty eight video right. That's like kind yeah. of advertising a feature from this upcoming release, right? No, that's that's been around. That's been around? honestly, bro. That's been in for a few updates. I think that was. Tw that was 21.2. So that's uh, that's been a bit. Yeah. They dropped that video. To kind of like resurge people's very, like awareness of it. Yeah, like close to where we talked about it and put it in the last... Was it the last? No, it was two episodes ago. I yeah. think we talked about it and put it in the episode. So it's it's been around for a little bit. And then so some things they're a little slower to make content on because they have a billion things they're doing, mm -hmm. as we can see. So they don't get around to every... But to go back to that point again... This these are such big features that when they do drop, I would bet a lot on the fact that they're gonna announce it right when it drops, like the day of. Like they'll have content ready. It'll be a huge deal, right? Because it was such a huge. I, and I'm I'm basing that off of how big of a deal it was uh, in the community in beta. It's gonna be a huge deal when they drop it. We're all gonna be talking about it again. There's gonna be a ton of people that forgot, didn't get beta, didn't even hear about any of this stuff. Mm that are going to be really excited when it fully drops because there's some people that see that it's in beta and they're like, "Ah, eh, I'll wait for it to drop in the full version." Cuz they don't want to they don't want to download a, another version of FL maybe they their computer can't handle it. They don't have enough space for it cuz it is another full version of FL Studio on your computer. Yeah, you have in a second version. Yeah. So, you know, it's an extra gig or whatever. If you don't have the space for it, mm -hmm. you don't get it. Um, we talked about like uh some 808 stuff. I, I want to know like some of your 808 gems. 808 is just always uh, obviously it's a huge topic of conversation. Mm -hmm. um, do you side chain? Do you not side chain? What do you go for in an 808 when you're looking and going through skimming through sounds? What do you look for in an 808? Mm. Like that that sort of thing. For me, I'm like the, the biggest thing about the 808 for me is like I like it to, I like it, I like it to be. At the bottom there, mm -hmm. like just kind of a lot of bottom, bottom. End. Yeah, yeah. Like Are you more bottom end when it comes to 808s, or do you like the the sizzle on top that kind of like, cuts I through? I like the, the bottom end. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm a mm, when it's got a nice bottom. Hey <laughs> <laughs> yo, hey hey yo, <laughs> what the? <laughs> um, no, but I, I like just that kind of that flavor of it because like i like the 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 distorted like really loud ones mm -hmm. too like that you would get with like like uh ronnie yeah oh my gosh ronnie whatever yep. like like that 808 but like i me personally that's not like where i go to with my 808 just because like my my beats typically don't sound like that but i like i like you know like the spins 808 of course you know just what I'm cuts saying? through every mix and uh but like even that being said like what i've taken to doing lately <clears throat> is all like uh i'll just make an 808 with a sub bass oh there you go because that's kind of how i like and then well, my... how will you get it to like because when you do it with a sub what do you do with 3x oscillator mm -hmm. yeah so when you do it with the 3x oscillator it's just a sine wave so correct you, yeah. so when you do it with the 3x oscillator just so i can like refresh my memory i'll bring it up real quick and then, so I'll, I'll have the note be really short on piano roll. Do you turn down the other two oscillators because it's three X oscillator? So there's three oscillators. Uh, yeah, I'll, you I'll turn like, the other ones off so it's just that one. I think I, I think that that's what I do. I yeah. don't know. It's just like it's so, a habit thing. It's a habit I, thing. I forgot about it until I you just know opened it up and I'm I'm going through my muscle yeah. memory. When I open it up, I instantly turn off two and three. These two right. knobs all the way on the right. Mm -hmm. I turn those off. 
turn them down all the way. And then I go to the course and I turn that down to negative 24, which is all the way down. And it, all that does is drop it two complete octaves. So yeah. that way you're working with a lower register sound right off the bat. Like, mm -hmm. And then what I'll do is like, uh, when I put the, when I put the three X sub bass into uh piano roll, mm -hmm. I'll like shorten the notes and then mess with the, uh, like how they attack and how they release. Where at? Like inside the note? No. in like the, um, the sample area. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like the, how it comes through is kind of different. Oh wait. So do you print it to audio and then bring it in? You're saying? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So when you do that, are you shaping it beforehand? Like in 3X Oscillator, you're creating an 808, essentially, mm -hmm. right? So let's go back a little bit. You're creating an 808 in there. And then when you find something that a sound that you like, or you're printing that to audio mm -hmm. and then pulling the audio clip in as mm -hmm. as if you would any 808 sample. Any pack, yeah. And like, then like you're a tweaking pack. a little bit more in there. Mm -hmm. I got yeah, you. Yep. Are you adding any like distortion uh before you print that to audio or are you doing that afterwards? I'll do it. Um it it depends on what I'm going for. Like if I want for instance, if I want it to have a, like an 808 feel, but have like almost like a triangle mm -hmm. synth in like, so I won't always mute the top two, but I'll keep like the high end with like a triangle uh, mm -hmm. waveform. I got you. Just to kind of make it unique it'll and different. Give it, it'll give it that. You, yeah, it'll just, kind you, of you're not going to get that 808 in any other pack. You gotcha. know what I'm saying? And I don't, I don't make packs, but like, I like to think like if I'm going to make something it's going to sound different from like yeah. whatever else is out there, yeah. yep. you know? Um, um, another, another good thing is like that I use, I utilize a lot when you're in the sampler is in the pre-computed effects tab in that boost knob. Yeah. So you can like really distort a signal like that. So if, especially if you're creating your own 808 with the three X oscillator mm -hmm. and it doesn't really have too much distortion, you could just distort it with that boost knob. Yeah, for sure. And then it, the only thing is if you want to save that 808, you'd have to let, then print it again so that way you save that version of it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it'll only be like that in that session. Right. So keep that in mind, yeah. The, like, I'll use that uh, that boost for... Um, I'll use it for kick sometimes, but it, it's always, like, here and there that I use it because sometimes it doesn't sound right, like it's too aggressive. And it not only be. not only is it, like um it, it just like hikes up a lot of like the more like high end mm. like mid high frequencies of the kick which isn't typically like what i'm looking for from my kick anyways like i like it a little bit more like boom. more punchy yeah, yeah yeah and then you can you, you can uh turn on the clip button too mm -hmm. so it'll almost clip it it i mean it will not almost it'll hard clip it at zero yeah otherwise if you just do the boost it's kind of just, it's going past zero. It just gives a different sound. I don't know, like, the technicality behind that, but, like, just tr try it out. Try messing with it. Give it a, you know. Yeah, the clip knob is definitely, like, a, a secret gem. I love that. I don't know when. I would love to remember, like, when they added that. I remember they they um they well, you, updated you, the, the crap out of the pre-computed effects at one point. They mm -hmm. added the boost. They added all this stuff. I remember I you using that back in, like, 2018. There. Yeah, I remember you using that back in 2018. It might have we came stuff up. through. Yeah, it might have came were, through then. You were just like, yo, like I've been doing this to make the kicks hit harder. Yep. And you started messing with that, like the clip knob. And it was instantly like, oh, yeah. it's like, oh, dang, it's been a bit. Crazy. Yeah. It might have been with 20, FL20. Mm -hmm. Whenever they created FL20, it might have been around then. Yeah. Because that definitely wasn't always there. There, I don't even think there was a, a pre computed effects tab at all. I love the stereo delay too, bro. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's my that's one of my go to. Sometimes I abuse it, but I love it. It just it it just takes away the need for a plugin that can do that. Like yeah. you want get you want to really just like stereo separate something, create some space in your mix. Mess around with the stereo delay option because I mean it is it, it, like I said it can be aggressive, and you could almost do it like too much and ruin a mix, ruin a sample. Mm. So when you're doing that advice that i can give if you do mess around with the stereo delay double check in mono double check your whole song if you ever mess For with sure. that go right to your master go right to the master and then just uh turn that in mono real quick turn your whole mix into mono and then test it again right. to hear it and see if you like ruined it essentially yeah it can be very <clears throat> very aggressive because essentially it's it's taken whatever signal that is and it's picture creating two of the of that same sample and then 
panning one all the way to the left, one all the way to the right, and then going pop, shifting them just a little bit like mm. that. Yeah. Essentially, that's what it's doing, if you can kind of picture that in your head. And then, like, how I kind of, how I kind of uh, describe mixing in mono versus in stereo is, like, when, say, you're listening to the song in stereo, and then you send it into mono, how different it sounds, like, how more lo-fi it sounds in mono, mm. you want to reduce. So basically, you want to be able to flip from stereo to mono to stereo without feeling like you're losing too much from the quality of the song, be it the frequencies that are getting cut off, um, the stereo image that's getting like cut off and, and sent down the center. Um, and so typically what I've found is that like the, the cloudier frequencies tend to really get brought out in the mono stuff, um, which is its own quality. like definitely don't take that completely out but be like all right i could definitely take a little bit of that cloudiness out to kind of clean the the signal overall through um and then when you're talking about like stereo delays and stuff like that by monitoring in mono when those stereo effects come into effect no pun intended <laughs> you're gonna either hear it get cut off or when you you know reduce the overall like input or or width of the effect uh when you reduce that and make it more you know um you know centered and, and appropriate we'll just say when you monitor in in mono you're not going to lose as much of that uh that delay that's coming in and out you know what right. i mean and and when you're talking about delay you're talking about something that creates space and it also creates rhythm and so if you're sending something totally stereo and losing it in mono which is what so many clubs and systems are in, you're losing not only like that spatial feeling, mm -hmm. but also the rhythm feeling that is going to be really important to those sorts of contexts. Right. right. Um, good talk. To stay on, yeah, Mono really, talk. Really here. good talk. <clears throat> uh, to stay on the 808 topic a little bit, I put this video out you know, last week, and it was, I think it was three ways to reverse an 808. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of got some... Uh, some uh chatter going on in the in the comments of them tell, telling me that like me, not one of those is really reversed mm -hmm. but i'm like i know i i know that they're technically i don't know if you saw that video yeah Did you see it yeah you just chopped the, so like the it was sample. all in the piano roll so yeah. my thing the, the <clears throat> point of that video was to get the reversed 808 sound in the piano roll and obviously you can't reverse it in the same pattern as your normal 808s so you're uh, you're essentially creating the reversed 808 sound right. but if you want to really reverse your 808 if you want to be like super technical about it you could do it I, the way i would do it is um in the playlist so let's say yeah. like this is your 808 you have your 808 normal sample i would go to the sampler click and drag that sample as audio into the playlist do you do it like that yeah i'll do so it like i would that. do that and then i would reverse it but now let's say um like that samples in c but your pattern or your beat is D sharp. Mm. So the first note that you want to reverse into, you want it to go from D sharp to D sharp, right? Mm -hmm. Or whatever your last note is into D sharp. You're going to have to tune and transpose that one sample that you now reversed because the sample that you dragged into the playlist is whatever root note that 808 sample was, which more mm -hmm. times than not, if people are tuning their kits, their 808s, it's a C. Right. So and also when you do that, transpose it. And also once you do that, like once you drag the sample from like you know the sampler into mm -hmm. the playlist, um, if you make tweaks to that sample, doesn't it affect wherever that sample no. is used, nope. even if it's a copy? <clears throat> nope. Because you're taking, you're going into the sampler of like, let's say you create your 808 pattern, right? You yeah. Ha you have your 808 pattern. You go into the sampler. When you go into the little sampler window. Mm -hmm. in there of the audio sample and you click and you drag that in into the playlist it now creates another uh an, another ch sample in the channel rack mm -hmm. so it, it automatically drops another one and it's colored differently too because it's an audio mm -hmm. it's not um it's not you creating midi with it so it makes another one in the channel rack so it's not going to affect the older one mm. so back to my point about the like tr the transposing so let's say it's d sharp right you want it to hit you want it to reverse into a D sharp, or you want that reverse sample to be D sharp to D sharp, right? But the one that you dragged in is the C. 
you would have to transpose that. So you'd have to go and, and know like how many semitones or how many cents you have to go up. Mm -hmm. So to go from C to D sharp, if you look at a keyboard, um, you don't count C, but you count C sharp, D, D sharp. So you, three, you count three notes, which is three semitones, which is also 300 cents. So you'd have to transpose that reversed sample up 300 cents to now go D sharp. Mm -hmm. So now that sample is D sharp. That's just an example, but some people get that confused and think, all right, if I just reverse it, it's going to sound good. Right. But you have to, you have to tune it essentially. You have to transpose it and tune it to match that. Whereas if you do it in the piano roll, like the, like the video that I showed, mm. you know where you're at already in there because you got the notes and you're already in the piano roll. You can see what notes you're trying to go to. So if you use those other effects, that aren't technically reversing the sample. Yeah, they just a bunch of <laughs> like incels. <laughs> Bro, it's like, I know it's not uh, technically, technically reversing. Me, I know me, it's me, not. Me. It's like, all right, yo, chill, but we're man. Getting, but we, we're getting the reversed sound in right. the piano roll. And those are the three ways that you could do it in the piano roll. This is technically <laughs> now, all right, that's how we technically really reversed the 808 in the, in the playlist. But keep in mind that it's a little bit more work because... Now, if you want different reverse notes, you now have to take that, make it unique as sample, and now transpose that one into a different note. Yeah. Whereas if you just want to get that reverse sound quick, be fast with it, do it the piano roll way, and there's three different techniques that mm. you could do. So, I mean, I don't know if that's enough 808 talk, but I, I mean, there's so many, because 808s are so popular in today's music, there's so many things to talk about 808 wise. I mean, there's yeah, one thing like, that we I talked think about earlier. I think fun would be like if you took a uh, if you took the sample, reversed it, and still played it out in your MIDI, and then just like whenever you wanted to, just be like, Whoomp. yeah, Whoomp. you can get really creative with Whoomp. it, and yeah. like you could uh, adjust the in and out and the the like the speed of it overall to go with like the tempo of like whatever the song is, and yep. it'll it'll probably work like that too. Oh, you yeah. know, just have yep. you know. Be creative with it. And like whatever you're doing shouldn't be technically what it is anyways. <laughs> when you're being creative, like how boring is that to just be like, this is technically how it's done. <laughs> People it's just like, want to chirp. It's like, yeah, why? How boring is that? People being like technically chirp. doing the thing that everybody else is doing. It's like, bro, do it the way that it sounds good. Make a beat that sounds yeah. good. How about that? Try that out. <laughs> yeah. Try, yo, try making a beat. <laughs> yo. Instead of making a tweet, let's I mean? um, let's let's go to uh last week's video and announce the winners. Yeah, cool. How about we do that? Um, run it up. Yeah, let's do it. Let me go to the comments real quick. <clears throat> By the way, if you didn't watch last week's episode, go check it out because we we uh, <clears throat> excuse me, between me being sick and scheduling <laughs> the week before, yeah. we couldn't get this this studio that we're in now. So it was a different vibe, different setup. Yeah. Last week's keyword was uh, Starbucks. So let's go through the comments real quick. Ba, 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 ba. Starbucks there. Today I'm drinking Dunkin'. <clears throat> Boo. I hate Dunkin'. I can't yeah. do it. I used to I used to be daily Dunkin'. Daily. Dunkin' Daily? Dunkin' Daily. <laughs> Sounds like a newscaster. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First winner is EL3CV Music 994. Winner number one. All right, uh, Samuel Davis, 2004. All winner right. number two, congratulations. Winner number three. Oh, wow, it's the same one. I think somebody commented twice. I'm going to scroll randomly. <laughs> winner number three is CCUNY1. Winner number four. Scroll, 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 scroll. Bah, bah. Tyler Dean, 42. We got some easy names today. Not Thank too bad. God. Not too bad. Winner number five. Final winner for today, for last week's episode. All right, here we go with the hard one. <laughs> Oof. Jinxed it. Uh, Yashar HP, Y-A-S-H-A-R-H-P, 1669. Congratulations, you are the fifth and final winner for last week's episode. Uh, if you heard your name and you're one of the five winners, DM me on Instagram. I'll send you all the links to every single one of my FL Studio and music production courses. Yeah. Um. I mean, while we're on the topic, let's do the keyword. 
Okay, hell yeah. Keyword, <laughs> key phrase for this week is boiler room. <laughs> I'm going to be picking five winners next week. Comment boiler room in the comment section down below. Next week, we're picking another five winners. Yeah. That's a little gem. I haven't talked about it in a while. I've talked about it in the past, but like, do you do a lot of sends? No, like not, auxiliary not really. Sends, FX sends? No, I don't, I don't do a lot of sends. No? So no. you're putting effects like a lot, mostly like... When you, let's say when you do a reverb or a delay, are you putting it directly on the sound? I'll put it on the sound. Really? I'll, I'll send for like compression and uh, and limiting. Mm. So like with the with the fruity limiter, mm. I'll like bring I'll bring the ceiling down to around where like the highest peaks are of the vocal. Yep. And then I'll just give a little push to just like glue it to okay. that center. And what I like about that, I mean, if you're not overdoing it. You don't get a ton of like background noise and like underbelly, mm -hmm. but it glues like the energy of the vocal to like a nice uh, like volume. All right. And it, to me, it just sounds like more professional. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. more crispy. <clears throat> I've never done that, um, but I like it. I like that. You've never done that? Not for a compression. No. Like Fruity Limiter? Not, not like in a send like that. Mm. I mean, technically, yes, I have, because if, I, if I'm doing my vocal chain, Things have been sent to that vocal chain. Yeah, Essentially, yeah. it's the same idea. I'll put it on the vocals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll do like a, a compression and then the but limiter But I've never as done well. it where it's just like one compressor on like an effect send and I'm sending things to it like that. I've never oh, done it Oh, I like see. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've, you you put that directly on? I'll put that directly. If, if it calls for it, if the yeah. sound calls for it. I mean, with my beats nowadays, it's just like I'm not compressing anything really. I, yeah. Maybe if the melody section sounds like it's kind of too much all over the place volume wise and i can't get a good level on everything mm -hmm. i might go to i might create because even in every beat i'm not creating a, a melody bus either but only if it sounds like it calls for it where i think all right the melody section is just kind of like it's all over the place i need to like squash it down a little right. bit i'll create a melody bus the way i do that that's a send i mean we, we throw these terms out but a melody bus or a drum bus or a vocal chain or an auxiliary send or an effect send. It's essentially all the same thing. Mm -hmm. And in FL Studio, it's the easiest thing in the world to create. People get confused because they're like, where are the sends at? Where are they at? Every track can be a send. Any track can be a send and be, yeah. you know, have you send something to it. You're sending signal mm -hmm. to. It's just a, yeah, it's just a mixer track. The way to do it, pick an empty mixer track, rename it, reverb send, right? Mm -hmm. Or just reverb. Right. And then I like to do it just to make it look nice as I dock it to the right. So that way it's just off to the side. Yeah. And then I'll throw I my reverb too. on there. So let's say we're doing a reverb. I'll throw the reverb on there. You have to turn the dry all the way down or else you're going to double the signal. Turn the wet. Just reset that wet knob to 100. Don't boost it all. I mean, you can boost it all the way up. But for some reason, if you turn it all the way up, it goes up to 125. Whereas if you just reset it, it stays at 100. They give you a little bit extra. Then uh, you create your reverb sound, however you want to create it. And, you know, you could, uh, what I do a lot of times is throw an EQ on after, clean it up, maybe clean up some lows, mm -hmm. you know, just throw a little low pass, maybe high pass. That's on a there. gem. Yeah, throwing an EQ on after that in the reverb send. Yeah. I like to do that. So that way, whatever you throw into that reverb, you're cleaning it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And the like the digital reverb just adds a lot of that that like fake quality to yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So like when you roll off a little bit of that extra high end or low end, really where I where mm. I hear it most is like in the high end. Yeah. Where I'm like wanting to clean that up just because it adds so much to the top that I'm just like, let's naturalize yeah. this a little bit. Let's make this sound a little bit more natural, you yep. know? Because I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Also side chaining mm -hmm. the reverb. Mm -hmm. So the same way I like to sidechain pretty much my 808s, my kicks and 808s, I sidechain the reverb in the same way. Mm -hmm. I'll, at the end of whatever other effects I put in that send, so let's say, for instance, it's just the actual reverb, whatever my setting is, then my EQ where I'm kind of cleaning up the lows and the highs, do whatever you want there. That goes to taste, so do whatever you want. At the very end, and just to make sure that it's always at the end, I, I usually go into slot number 10, and then I put the fruity limiter in there. Mm -hmm. That's just my favorite way of side chaining. And then I'll throw it on the compressor setting. And then um, you have to have something sent to it. So let's just say we have track insert number one. And then you just highlight track number one. 
and then let's say we want reverb on that track i'll left click the arrow on the bottom of the reverb send now you have that little volume choose the amount of volume and the amount of reverb that you want to put on there now if you go back to the limiter inside of that you can now scroll up to number one right now i only have one thing sidechain to it and it knows it now so mm -hmm. now that's sidechain and then from there just go to taste as far as how much sidechain you want so that's really good because let's say you have reverb on your vocals right mm -hmm. and you don't want that reverb to be constant all the way through you want like a good wet nice amount of reverb on those vocals but you only want it to like really peek through during those like little gaps you want it there the whole time but you don't want it full full blast full volume that whole entire full throttle vocal, full <laughs> throttle the entire time <laughs> yeah you want those moments to where the vocal dips down and there's that little gap maybe that little bit of breath that air you want the reverb to come in and fill that mm -hmm. side chaining it like this is the best way to do it so you would just adjust the threshold you would play the vocal through mm. adjust the threshold adjust the ratio to the point where you can you'll be able to see the peaks coming through and then you adjust it to taste there mm -hmm. and then it'll only just it'll peek through how much it, it depends on how much you want in there so if you want it to be completely silent while the vocal is going through and only peek through during those gaps you could do that you would just have a lot of threshold a lot of ratio going on to where it's zeroed out when the vocal's coming through and it just shoots up to whatever volume it's at play around with that uh play around the threshold the ratio and also play around with the actual level that's being sent to that uh that reverb send as well the other thing that i love about having the reverb and delay sends is that you have a stereo separation knob on those tracks right so now you can separate the stereo there versus having it directly on a vocal or directly on if you do that it'll do it to the whole track yeah so you're just doing it just to the reverb send or the delay send whatever that effect send is because essentially you could do anything in there you could put a phaser on it and send right. to a phaser so you could do whatever you want but i love having that option all my templates now whenever i open up fl there's always a reverb and a, and a delay send there just always there that mm. i made in my template that's why I'm I'm excited to hear what you what you do with this song that I sent you the other the yeah, other night. I haven't di been able yeah. to dive into it yet, but I'm I'm gonna go in. I, on I'm it. I'm excited because like I think that this is a really important thing for creatives like who are, uh, you know, they do a lot of their own mixing, a lot of their own mastering. Um, I was I was working on this song. Shouts out to my my dude Jesse the Tree who sent me the beat, and we kind of like went back and forth with producing it, and I was. Uh, I re-recorded it. I, I added some stuff to it and I was like, all right, this sounds good. But I kind of kept hitting a wall in terms of what I wanted it ultimately to sound like in terms of like um, mixing and mastering the entire thing. And so like what happens is you get used to hearing a song a certain way and then you kind of just like, all right, this is the version. Right. But then you're like, but it's still not there. I think it's really important that you have somebody like you know myself and larry where you like send it to somebody to get like another new, ear new yeah. ears on yeah. it and be like how would you do this yep. you know what i'm saying and um and uh i think like that's just huge mm -hmm. like we talked about this before but like collaboration on every step of the process yep. is really important because you're not gonna like you can't carry the boat the and entire being open-minded <laughs> What I've noticed about like working a lot with you in the past is like how open minded you are when somebody gives a suggestion or wants to try something else out. Yeah. Like you like you might not e even in your head. Sometimes you're like, ah, I don't think it's going to work, but we're going to try it. You yeah. Know what I'm saying we're, we're, we're going to try it anyways. Right. Just try it because sometimes what you picture in your head is completely different than what actually happens when you hear it. For sure. Like you could just be open minded to change, be open minded to new ideas from other people. Collaboration. Mm -hmm. When you collaborate with people, there's you're doubling the amount of ideas that there could be. Correct. You know, let's yeah. say if there's one person, now you have two. You're essentially doubling the ideas. So be, you have to be open minded to the ideas. You have to be open open minded to trying those ideas mm -hmm. out as well. Yeah. That's huge in collaboration. And then with with uh like just to speak on that a little bit, it's like with the nature of like mixing and recording and all this stuff being the way that it is now, it's like you can really afford to take those chances in in terms of like um like things that you try out and things that you experiment. You got to try pretty much everything yeah. that is you know, that is gonna potentially move this thing forward. Right. 
I think uh, that's going to wrap it up for today. Mm -hmm. Hell good, yeah. Good episode. Again, thank you, everybody, for watching, sharing, liking, commenting, subscribing. If you haven't, make sure you please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, make sure to share this with a friend if you, you get, get me. me. <laughs>